Hello, everybody. This is Sandy Boucher, and welcome back. I don't know if this is working or not. It's Sandy Boucher, and welcome back to Surviving Isolation. Now, I'm trying something new here. I am once again shooting a video while I record the podcast, but I'm doing it as a Facebook Live event. And I haven't done this since things have changed on Facebook, so hopefully this is working. If you belong to the group or you follow the group, you noticed that a couple minutes ago I shared a picture of my computer screen and it's covered in post-it notes because honestly I'm feeling a little silly today. It's Friday and I really just didn't want to one babble for seven hours because I am a motivational speaker. When I get up on stage, I usually stop talking about seven hours later. Didn't want to do that to you. But I did want to touch base on certain things. So as I go through them, I'm just going to pull the post-it notes off my screen and hopefully we'll have an amazing chat. So let's touch base with the facts first. First post-it note. March 11th is when the World Health Organization declared the pandemic. As of today, that is 37 days ago. You're still here. You're still surviving. Give yourself kudos for that. Second post-it note. In Ontario, which is where I am, Northern Ontario, March 17th was when Ontario declared the state of emergency. So that was 31 days ago. Woo! Hang in there, guys. As for me, March, now I need to look at my calendar here because I think this might be inaccurate. Nope. March 14th was the date I did my last live event with Long Lack 58 First Nation. Shout out to all of you. It was an amazing event. Little did I know that was going to be my last for so long, but I'm thrilled that I got to share it with you. So I did that event in the morning, and then because I had done so much traveling, I went into self-isolation that afternoon. So that was 34 days ago, and I wonder why I'm starting to get a little stir-crazy. Eh, that might be why. As always, our episodes of Surviving Isolation starts with a mental health check-in, and that's not my mental health, that's yours. So I hope you're doing okay. I hope you are doing FaceTime. Honestly, this past week was my birthday. Do I sound older? I'm now older than I was last week. I'm now 56. I had to think about that. <laughs> but uh, my son called me using FaceTime or, or Facebook Messenger, or whatever. I could see his face. And I didn't realize how much I missed seeing his face. I had... Thought it was no big deal because I do talk to them on a regular basis. I talk to my daughter almost every day. Holy moly's did it make a difference. So if you are feeling isolated, please reach out. There's nothing wrong with saying, I miss you. I need to talk to you. Don't think of that as a sign of weakness. That's actually a sign of wisdom that you're identifying what you need and going out to get it. So please do that. So mental health check-in. I hope you're doing okay. Uh, one of the side benefits of this time period for me, and I definitely did not see this coming, is I have a new pen pal. I send out, and I hope you're on my email list, by the way, that you've gone to sandyboucher.com and signed up, because every Monday I send out what I call a pick-me-up email, and it's just you know, memes and, and funny stories or different supports. It's every week is different. One of the women on the list received that email, wrote back to me. I wrote back to her, wrote back to back and forth, back and forth. I now have a pen pal. We've, uh, she did mention she's attended one of my sessions. So I hope she gives, I've asked her for more information on that, so hopefully I can put a face to the name. But it's been such a joy getting to know her, and we both look forward to each other's emails. It so reminds me of back in the day when my mom used to write letters to her sister. So there are ways to connect, and please, whatever you need to do, connect with people. So, um... As I mentioned, I don't know, what day am I on? Day 34, something like that? Yes. Um, how am I doing? Well, I would say uh, today 
I, I like to live my life at like an eight or nine out of 10. Today, I'm kind of a seven. Got to admit, you can see the hair here for people watching this on video. And by the way, way to go. Hello to people in Facebook land and, and to YouTube land, if that's where you're watching this. And if you're listening to it on Anchor or Spotify, hello. Thank you for coming out. Um, the people in the video notice uh, no straightener happened today in my hair. Uh, and that's because I'm kind of, oh, I missed one. I'm kind of at a seven today. I can honestly say I'm tired. Now, that would have been a norm for me on a Friday. As a general rule, on Fridays, I only work till noon. I take Friday afternoon, Friday evening, and all Saturday off. And then I get back to work Sundays. I've always worked preparing for the week ahead. So I think my body, even though it's really hard to remember what day it is of late, I think my body is telling me, you know what, Sandy, it's Friday. Uh, the other thing is, if you follow my blog post, whether it's on my website or in my Facebook group, you know that lately I've been really trying to ignore the clock and listen to the vibe of my body and sleeping when I need to sleep, whether it's daylight or not, and going to bed when I need to go to bed, whether it's 6 or 7 p.m. or not, really just discarding those old rules. And as a result, the last couple of days, I've actually been getting up at like 4 a.m., which is amazing because I have tons of work done even before the sun comes up. But today, I'm feeling it. I'm a little tired. Now, I did want to share a story with you today, and I'm not sure if I can call it a story, but years ago, this has got to be like 10 years ago now, I was watching one of those daytime talk shows and I think it was Oprah, believe it or not. And she was interviewing a woman. The woman was the mom of five kids. Her ex had taken the kids for visitation and absolutely horrific story. He had ended up committing suicide and killing the children as well. So, the phrase she used was new normal. She had this horrible adjustment that she went from the mom of five children, and I can't even imagine how insane her house would have been and how busy of an existence that would have been to no children and dealing with the silence. So, and I think that's what we're all dealing with right now is trying to adjust to this new normal and deciding what deciding consciously or unconsciously what we're going to continue doing and what we're not doing. So for me, I'm pretty much adjusted to my new normal. Being Anishinaabe and with my entertaining past, I've always been quite aware of what I can do and can't do, what I do control and what I don't. So I'm very conscious of the fact I don't control what happens out there. Uh, it's been interesting, but I've had a life and teachings and elders and teachers that have taught me to accept the things I cannot change and change the things I can. So listening to my body's vibe is one of the things I can change. Uh, trying to live the way I used to live before this happened just doesn't make sense to me because life has changed. Uh, so that's that's where I'm at. I think I'm doing pretty good with accepting the things I cannot change and changing the things I can. Now, if you've been following these episodes, you know that one of the things I did uh, was become incredibly conscious of the fact that I wasn't moving. That when I'm not in seminar, obviously when I'm in seminar, I'm on my feet all day. It's a very active day. I love doing that. But when I'm not in seminar, I'm sitting at this desk and I'm not moving. And I don't even want to think about the size my tush could get to. So I started turning on my music and doing laps around my condo. And it takes about 30 seconds to do a lap. I'm now an expert at this. I've timed it. So what I, I, I keep track. I do statistics. Oh, hello, Dave. How are you? Yes, it is an entirely new world. I agree with you. So I keep statistics to, I mean, business. Of course, I'm used to it. If you can't measure it, you can't improve on it. So, or you can't even track it. So, 
back in February, before all of this hit, now I track the steps with my phone, so if I'm not carrying my phone, may not be the most accurate number in the world, and that's probably what happened in February, or at least that's what I'm telling myself. My average number of steps per day for the month of February is 1,185. That is not anything to be proud of. Just putting that out there. That is not healthy. That is not the person I want to be. My health is a result of my actions and choices or my inaction and bad choices. So I wanted to fix that. Now, I am thrilled to say that as of March, which, which, just ended not that long ago. March, my steps, I went from 1185 to an average of 2267. So I doubled my average steps. And as of today, doo -doo -doo -doo, my average steps are 4,719 per day. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm aiming to have 5,000 average steps by the end of the month, and then we're just going to keep climbing from there, and that's my challenge for every day that I have to do better than I did before. So uh, at this point in time, we always look at what works for me and what doesn't work for me, and I hope you can relate to them. If, if you're looking for great ideas, maybe some of them that I'm doing will work for you. Maybe some absolutely won't. And as always, I'm looking to hear what works for you. I'll mention it in a future episode, so make sure to comment. Uh, if you're commenting, this screen that I have on for Facebook Live is, I'm not sure how easy it is to see the comments, so, but uh, hopefully, if you comment, I will see it. So what has worked for me? This is a big post-it note. Uh, I mentioned this in the last episode, really having a future focus works for me. I am not, I'm doing fine right now. I'm surviving this. I am focused on being ready for the world after the pandemic, to have skilled up, to take this opportunity to learn new things. I'm totally reformatting my business from live events to online offerings. So I am not one of those people that is sitting around bored. I kind of envy you people. I am incredibly busy trying to get those offerings out there. For me, it literally means revenue. So hugely, hugely important. Another thing, I have always taken joy from accomplishing things. That's my jam. That's when I feel happy. So I still have, yes, I still have a day book. I'm showing my age here. I have a day book that is, this thing is like 25 years old, I think. This is like my longest relationship right here. But I still use it. And I do a to-do list every single day. And, and I don't think I'm really known as a lazy person. I hope not. I don't think, I hope no one looks at me that way. But I can have my lazy times. Although I'll be the first to admit I'm the worst procrastinator in the world. I cannot relax until my to-do list is done. And then I'm going to become one with the couch. And I was thinking about that this morning. That's really my parents. That's, you know, my dad was constantly working, fixing something, building something, repairing something around the house. And so was my mom. I never saw them just sitting around watching TV unless it was evening time and it was family time. So I think I come by that. Honestly, I'm not like some crazy workaholic type, type person. This is my jam. So don't worry about me. Uh, the other thing I've loved for as long as I can remember is learning. To be able to learn something new, acquire a new skill, that's that I love that. To me, that's a great use of my time. The reality is life is going on. We are still aging. It's not like time stopped and we're going to get this time back. So I, I want to make the most of my life and the time I have here. So I am learning new things. And I have decided one of the things that the master trainers in my industry do is read a book a week and I've given myself that goal thrilled that right now I am reading start with why amazing book if you're in business I highly recommend it uh, and I will be finishing it this weekend so I made my book a week for this week Yay! 
the other thing that keeps me going is to see that I am making progress in this new business model, that people are responding to it. It seems to be working. Truth be told, it's going to be amazing once the pandemic is over because I now have online revenue or online mechanisms that I earn money which means I'll actually be able to spend more time with my family and my friends. I won't be crazy on the road like I was before. I work a lot with First Nations communities. I'm not into charging huge dollars for the work I do, but that meant that translated into me having to do a lot of work to, to have the income that I need to simply support myself in this business. Having the online revenue means that I'll have two revenue streams and i know i'm talking business here but the work i'm putting in now is going to be a great thing so and i'm enjoying it so ah, don't worry about me equally important what doesn't work well oh, hello i think i touched on this last episode junk food holy moly's it was so easy in the beginning just to be eating crap and I was joking around, no witnesses. Um, well, there's still no witnesses. The cat doesn't care. Uh, but holy moly, my body, I swear this morning, and I posted that on Facebook, my body was screaming, could you please eat something healthy today? So that's that doesn't work. The other thing that doesn't work for me, and this is incredibly personal, and, and specific to me, but I think a few of you might be able to relate. My fans, followers may not be aware of the fact that I have a permanent neck injury. I actually got hurt at work in my early 20s. I think it was like 23, 24. It was back in 1991, really showing my age here. But what that means is I am constantly in pain every single day all the time it's just a matter of degrees like right now today i'm tired and i can feel it that's the result if i don't get the rest i need if i don't when my neck's sore it literally cannot take the weight of my own head so uh i've noticed lately because i've been reading and and my neck injury is right at the base of my spine so if i'm looking down that aggravates it I've spent a little too much time on my laptop looking down, uh, reading, looking down. I think I'm going to suck up to my son. He does woodworking and get him to make some kind of stand that I can clip the book to. So I'm looking up. Both my monitors in my office are raised for that exact reason. I have to be super, super careful of that. So that's one thing that's definitely not working for me. Uh, this is the last thing I'm going to be doing for today is shooting this video and then I have to rest. And, and I hope you are taking care of your health. And if you have health challenges, by the way, I'm sorry if you do have health challenges, but I hope you're taking care of yourself, that we have to take care of ourselves during this time. Uh, I mentioned this before, and I'm still sticking to it. Social media, holy moly's. I took some pretty drastic steps this week. For one, um, my personal friend list on Facebook used to be huge because I just basically accepted friend requests from anyone that seemed decent and, and fun, and I wanted to add them as a friend. And... It just got insane. There's so many people out there right now with these insane conspiracy theories or these um, that are actually calling other people names for wanting to take this seriously. It's getting horrible. So I reduced my friend list down. I literally removed 2000 people and I'm not saying they're bad people, but they weren't people I knew. And I actually brought, go figure, my personal friend list down to actual personal friends. And that has helped huge. And even still, I have to really limit my time on social media. The other thing I used to do was daily, I used to listen to the prime minister's update. I don't anymore. I just can't. I will catch the clips of it on YouTube before I go to bed. But you just be careful. Be careful what you're taking in. If it's adding helping you to feel good and adding to your mental health bonus if it's bringing you down please don't do that and i'm not saying about you know crawl into a hole and not be aware but 
just take care of yourself. Hi, Tiffany. Oh, my God, I miss you. Ah, just seeing your name, girl. I want to hug this stuff in any And all your beautiful kids. Oh, my God. Tiffany, I'm going to get pers guys just ignore me for a sec. Tiffany, please keep sharing pictures of your beautiful children. I so appreciate it. The grandma in me just loves it. So keep doing that. Uh, what else doesn't work? Um, well, I mentioned for me, this doesn't work. Doing nothing. I can't. I just can't. It feels like I'm wasting my life, wasting a day. <laughs> it was funny. I really got to give myself a break. Mind you, this morning I was like, oh, my God, I'm being so lazy. And I realized it was like 1030. That's kind of hard. Oh, thank you, Tiff. I appreciate it. Um, I have to do something during the day, even if it's shower, clean my kitchen, fill the dishwasher, do the laundry. I have to feel like I'm doing something. Today, like I said, this is the last thing for my day. I've finished my to-do list, and then I'm going to guilt-free, go chill. Find what works for you. If it means chilling, you know what? I kind of wish, Tiffany just reminded me of this, I kind of wish my kids were little right now because... I was a working mom when they were little, and I wish I could have just stayed home and loved the stuffing out of them. I wish. And, of course, I say that now. <laughs> Looking back, they probably would have drove me nuts in four hours. But, you know, I'm missing the stuffing out of my grandkids. So, you know, whatever it is, if you're lucky enough to have your kids with you, please enjoy that. If you're lucky enough to have a partner with you, enjoy that time together. Consider this as a gift. Uh, I know I'm going to be doing some serious beadwork this weekend, something I don't have a lot of time to do normally. And I'm really looking forward to that. Wait till you see what I'm beading. It's going to be amazing. Now, the next one. People who know my personality or my sense of humor will get this. It may be shocking to other people, so brace yourself. One of the things that totally doesn't work for me, underwear. <laughs> like, specifically bras. Now, I'm not a big chested girl, and with my neck injury, that's totally not something I'm going to do. And who would know anyways? If I wasn't sharing it on a podcast or in a video, you would never know. But I'm wondering, like, I'm wearing sweatpants right now. I'm not going to show you. Hello. But I'm wearing sweatpants, and I never wear sweatpants. So, like, why not? Right? Enjoy it. Do whatever works for you. I am coming to the end of my time here. I always try to keep it in the uh, half an hour mark. And all my post-it notes are gone except for the last one. You need to go to sandyboucher.com and you need to sign up to get on my email list so you can get the pick me up email. I would love to touch base with you. Feel free to reply. Let's get a conversation going. Let's, let's support each other. I have the time. I'm definitely going to respond to your emails. So that is, I don't even know what episode I'm on now. I think it's like episode five of Surviving Isolation. And now I wish I had called it rocking isolation because I, in the beginning, like everyone else, I was just surviving. But you know what? Life is good. I'm, I'm watching on Facebook and my friends are doing good and we're finding ways to survive and we're supporting each other and encouraging each other. I had a challenging moment yesterday and my friends came out in full force to support me and I so appreciate every single one of you and you know you better just brace yourself now because when this is over I am going to be hugging the stuffing out of a whole bunch of people. So until next Friday, until the next episode, please take care of you. Take care of your mental health, take care of your physical self, take care of your family, take care of your partner. But remember, you're in that mix, and I need you to take care of you too so that I can hug the stuffing out of you as soon as this is done. Until next week, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I want to hear from you, so send me an email. I love you. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.